Hey guys, welcome back to Brick System Brothers. It's me, Nathan Masters, talking about end of our month stuff here. I do want to mention a few things that came up in some of the videos during uh, May here, 2021. Uh, so that's what the stuff on this side of the table is, and we'll jump right in in a sec, take a look at that. Also going to look back what we were doing a year ago here on the channel, back in May 2020. And then our answering machine segment, again looking at those questions that come in through the comments. So one of those to do out here, and then three, I think there's three or four more to look at uh, as a screen recording because it was mostly digital this month. Um, and then just look at the analytics for how the channel did here in May. Um, and that'll kind of wrap it up for footnotes. That's what we want to talk about. So let's get it rolling. So I've got four main things to talk about concerning some of the videos that we released this month. Um, and I think we put out 19, including this footnotes. So uh, 18, just kind of our regular topic, you know, whatever we decide to discuss. So that's up a little bit from April, um, but I think that's the same number of videos we put out in March. So maybe averaging out close to 20, 15 to 20 videos here at the start of 2021. Um, four of those from this month were the color chart, so this was close to the end of the month here. And I was going to mention this during the kind of wrapping up discussion part. If people have the colors that I'm missing to complete some of these, I am open to trading for those. And one of the things I have to offer for trading uh, is actually maybe interesting to people who are working on their own one of these color charts. Uh, the 2x4 brick, and it's this more of a violet color. Um, so the darker purple, not too hard to find. The medium lavender, probably harder to find than this color, um, but this is the color that I do have some extras of that I would be willing to trade out. Um, and I'm not sure how you know, shipping details could be arranged, but our email address is um, bricksystembros at gmail.com. That's also in our channel about page. So if that is something you'd be interested in, drop an email and we could maybe work something out. <clears throat> also with that color chart, I was bringing in these chrome 2x4 keychains and so we did get into that discussion a little bit. Um, these three items were what I decided to buy at the Kansas City Lego store um, and that video just went up right before this one. So Josh kind of talked through um, our visit there and it wasn't a very long visit because the pick -a brick wall was closed. And that pick -a brick wall being one of the main attractions for Josh and I now getting those pieces uh, a little more cost effectively, especially those newer ones. So walked out with a monkey kid minifig pack and this actually just has three minifigs. It's almost like a battle pack, you know, Lego doesn't do a whole lot of battle packs these days. Um, but I saw this one announced on Brickset earlier this year and was keeping an eye out for it. And it was there in the Lego store, so I did pick this one up. I like the prints on the torsos. Uh, I don't really need the mini builds, but um, Monkey Kid is pretty much sold exclusively through uh, Lego retail stores and online. I don't make a lot of purchases online, so this was one of my only chances to pick up something like this, and I decided to go for it. All right, next two things are a little bigger here. You guys might be able to guess what is in an Amazon box. It was the Friends Central Perk uh, Ideas. Let me get this up on the top, there we go. So I ordered two of these, they were down to 52 bucks on Amazon. Um, and that gives us pretty close to five cents a piece for new sealed Lego. Uh, just went into detail about why I'm doing this now instead of earlier um, and discuss that a little bit more in depth in that video. So those are here. Uh, I probably will open one of these up and part it out. And I actually might wait to do that until I see what these are doing at the end of this year, 2021. So if I can wait six months, if these are already, you know, a hundred bucks a piece, then I probably won't open any of them, and I'll just hold on to that for a little while. On a similar note, uh, I put out our What's at Walmart video a little earlier than I usually do, um, and then that gave us time to actually get back to another Walmart and look for those clearance deals and those sale deals. And I happened to find a bunch of sets marked down 20%. 
Um, so here's a, just a little walkthrough of some of the aisles and stuff that was out. Uh, the road plates, the base starter kit for the road plates was down to $16. I still didn't pick it up because I feel like I have enough of the old ones uh, to kind of keep that system. But yeah, that was some of the stuff that was marked down. Uh, seems like it was just a general markdown of 20% off. Uh, so a $50 set was $40 like that Ninja Charger. This Ninjago set, Zane's Titan Mech Battle, was a $60 set and it was down to $48. Um, so that's, you know, that's enough reason for me to buy it again looking at that piece count. Um, getting close to six, five or six cents a piece for brand new sealed Lego. And especially this one being Ninjago, I have a hunch this will do well on the secondary market if I hold on to it in a sealed box for a while. Last year on Brick System Brothers, I reviewed this Indiana Jones truck. Now this is actually just the truck as part of uh, a larger set from 2008. Um, so I I have the pieces for the rest of it, I just have never built up the entire set. I wanted to talk about just the truck in that video, so that's what I did. It was about seven minutes. Um, so this one is a nice set because it has the metallic or the drum lacquered gold treasure chest, um, which has been a hue tap. It had, it had actually been uh, a hue tap video by the time I did this video as well. So. Um, I'll just point you back to that if that's something you want to check out. Some of the newer viewers on the channel might not um, have seen some of the older stuff, especially um, a lot of videos that do fall through the cracks that only have um, 30 or 40 views uh, might be worth a watch back on the channel. All right, <clears throat> next segment is our answering machine, a little 1x4 Tele Octum sticker. So this one wasn't much of a question, but Jaden Foster left a comment on HuTap 18 uh, where we were talking about this 6x8 slope. Uh, and he mentioned something about this being 8 degrees instead of 10. Most databases that have a degree listed in the entry for this piece say 10 degrees. So I was kind of curious, you know, would there be a way to actually figure out what the slope of this wedge is? Um, so I started out just with kind of a basic rudimentary uh, rough estimate. And to get that, you want to take the base and the height, and then you can solve for the angle with a little bit of trig. So for this piece in particular, uh, the base is six studs. The height is one brick. Um, now you can't say six and one because a brick is actually taller than a plate is wide. And the relationship here is six widths or you know six studs this way equals five bricks high and so you take six over five you get 1.2 so our numbers that we want to plug in are 1.2 over six you take the inverse tangent and you get a slope of 11.3 degrees so that's pretty close to 10 I can see why they would round that down to have a nice whole number but is that correct and the reason it's not is because we actually have a little jump when we start at the corner here. So the actual slope of this triangle is not a base of 6 and a height of 1.2. It's a base of something a little bit longer. And to get what that little bit longer number is, I went ahead and rendered this from studio, opened it up in Paint 3D, and overlaid an actual right triangle on the outline. So basically that just extends it out to where we want um, the actual tip of the triangle to be. And then I open that up in uh, my photo viewer and measured off the screen, which is <laughs> kind of unorthodox, but that's how we roll, to get the actual numbers that we want to use when calculating the slope of this piece. And those are just based on the number on the screen. And this works because you can scale it up and down. That doesn't change the angle. 14.6 with a base and 2.2 for a height. So we plug those in, 2.2 over 14.6, inverse tangent. That is actually 8.57 degrees, which is much closer to 8 degrees than 10. Well, it's kind of closer to 9 degrees. but So Jaden Foster kind of 
a little more correct than the databases. Jaden, I wish you had told me where you heard that, because I did look around online a little bit to try and figure out if anyone else had been working on this that I could reference. Um, and five, ten minutes of Googling didn't turn up much. I found someone uh, doing the actual slope of a cheese, you know, the one-by-one -one slope. Um, so that's out there, but I couldn't find specific work pointing back to doing this math. Uh, but anyways, that's just a little aside. That's not even much of a question, but that was something that came up in the comments that I was curious about and I wanted to address here in the footnotes. To continue the answering machine segment here, another one that we got asked was on our studio tutorial from VT29 Steam Train, how to automatically generate instructions, um, which if you are building a model without dividing the steps as you build, turns out it can be kind of tricky and kind of a pain to generate instructions from studio. The trick is as you build, um, you want to kind of break them into steps that make sense. Um, and the way that I usually do this is I build up a physical model first and then kind of work my way back through and build it up in studio. That way I kind of know the order of operation that I want to do. You insert these as steps as you build and then you click on the instruction and it will break it down into those steps that you kind of determine there. GV or GVAL DW asked a question on the LDD export three methods. Um, can you export to Bricklink? So I looked into it a little bit. Uh, I first replied and then I tried it out and was able to get something working where you actually don't need to uh, export anything at all. Uh, in terms of the bill of materials, you can um, bring a LXF file directly into a modern Bricklink wanted list. So I put that video out and that's already got some feedback on that one as well. And the last thing for the answering machine was a question from Zat Luckman on the Lego Art Remix site. So I will pull that in. This is something that I talked about a while back um, when our Lego art sets got released and it was something that a fan put together where you bring in your own custom image and this kind of computer script will fit it to uh, the art style. So their question, the question I got in from Izat was um, an image that uses the default colors, will those colors be available to order and you know is it actually possible to build um, the custom image that you generate? And it all depends on what you've selected as your input set. So it does have some defaults, uses the inventories from the actual art sets themselves, um, but these have kind of a limited color palette depending on which one you go with. Like Iron Man has a lot of dark blue and dark red. Um, Harry Potter ones has some of the primary colors and then a lot of gray. So when I was doing these tutorials, I did all stud colors and then that way you kind of know Whatever color shows up in your mosaic does exist, it has been released. Now that doesn't say a lot about how available they are because there are still a few stud colors that are pretty rare and hard to find. Um, but you can look into Rebrickable, Bricklink, and maybe get a better idea of which colors are not so easy to get a hold of and kind of work from there with your LEGO Art Remix. All right, so to just close out our footnotes here, I'll talk about our analytics for May a little bit. Uh, currently, we are at 1,255 subscribers. Uh, just note, this is recording as of uh, the 26th, and YouTube's analytics go back a day. So this is showing stats for May 1st through May 25th. A couple more days to go here, um, so this will probably be around 1260, and these will all be up slightly. So views for May are pretty steady again right about that 500 average we did have a nice peak on the 22nd over 600 that corresponds to a peak in watch hours as well so the 22nd here our highest is as well at 30 watch hours and then it's actually growing again uh, subscribers was, was a little more fluctuation but we did gain 45 uh, in these 25 days that it shows here um, the 20th was kind of a down day and then that 22nd seems kind of average so I'm not sure where um, these spikes are coming from and then again with that ad revenue 
probably getting to 15 or 16 dollars again here for may which is very comparable to march and april seems like we're kind of stabilizing there all right guys well thanks for watching that is our may here on brick system brothers not too shabby not too bad at all uh, kind of an average month with 20 videos or so and some stuff coming out next month uh, well we did our poll we did that um, we did our poll for the uh, most recent video which you guys chose the Kansas City store behind that was the Omaha bricks and minifigs which will be out early in June and then the job lot phase three these other two are recorded I just wanted to see what you guys wanted to see first um, so these two are coming out for sure and probably another hue tap and you know whatever we decide to make a video about so stay tuned for all that coming up on brick system brothers if you're still here thanks guys a uh, moment of silence for uh, the viewers of the channel that don't watch footnotes yeah they don't know what they're missing but you guys are here so thanks a lot and we'll see you next time on Brick System Brothers.